Hello everyone. My name is Harsh Brasan Mishra and I will be presenting a talk on building polyglot applications using the Metacall core library. Before I jump into my talk, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to the organizing and the volunteering team at Icon APAC for providing this great opportunity and helping me put forward a word about Metacall before a general audience. So a little introduction about me. Uh, I was a Google Summer of Code 2021 student at Metacall, the core library of which I will be talking about in the next 30 minutes. And I have been working for the past few months, tinkering and playing around with the core library, building simple tools and applications to going on to build a fully fledged IPython kernel for cross language function calls using the Metacall core library. Right now, I'm working as a software developer at Quantsight Labs, where I work on projects like QHub and SkyPy, and I primarily specialize in web development, web engineering, and DevOps. So the agenda for our today's talk would be very simple and flexible. We will get to know about polyglot development first and its particular use case on why is it so important. Next, we will talk a bit about the Metacall core, the library that brings forward the ultimate polyglot programming experience. We will get to know a few things underneath the code and we will finally get to build our own polyglot application using the Metacall core library using Python and Node.js plus Express. Uh, for any questions or concerns, you can put it on the chat section and I will take all of the questions at the end of the whole talk. So let's get started up. Uh, so before we move on to the practical implementation, let us talk about the history behind why we arrived at this particular polyglot development library. So a few years back, a couple of engineers were working on the development of a game engine, as simple as that. One engineer was completely working on developing it using the C programming language, while the other one was working on the development of the interfaces and the graphics. After some initial version releases, uh, they realized that they have an initial blocker in the development process. First, they wanted more people to join their team, but it faced the blocker that not a lot of people had the expertise in the primary language that they were using. The developers also wanted to use different pro programming languages in the same code base, which was not technically feasible before, and migrating the code base was simply quite expensive. It was at this time that they thought that we can possibly use scripting to make this approach work. But with this use case, we discovered a lot of problems that can be possibly solved. For example, engineers faced a lot of problems in migrating their code base. If someone is using PHP and they wish to migrate to something like Node.js, that would carry its own set of problems, especially when they are developing it in a completely new environment. Another problem that we saw was the lack of interoperability between uh, different libraries in different languages. The lack of interoperability basically restricted our choices to only some few available and supported libraries in each language. And we simply didn't have the support. We didn't have the freedom to choose the right tools for our purpose. Adding on top of it, we wanted to embed the low level scripts in high level environment. Like if I take an example, we want to have Lipsum Comp 2 in C, which is used for sandboxing the Linux interface in Python. But it would be great if we can have something like this in Node.js. That was not possible before. Some of these problems at hand were particularly concerning, and the engineers wanted to develop a solution for the same in an easy and flexible manner. And this is where we arrived at the concept of polyglot programming. So now we are at the most important part of our talk. What exactly is polyglot programming? So polyglot programming or polyglot development, whatever you prefer, it is the practice of using different programming languages on the same code base. And we practically ensure that multiple different developers have different expertise in different languages and they can collaborate with each other without having a lot of friction. They don't have to restrict themselves to just the few available choices, but they can pick up the right tools, they can pick up the right libraries, the frameworks for their purpose in a completely language agnostic interface. 
Polyglot programming brings a wider tool chain and technologies that you can use pragmatically. You can simply focus on writing your logic and the conceptual part of the code. Uh, and you don't have to completely worry about the semantics, the language development, and all sorts of those features, which are particularly the hot topic of any online programming discussion. You can use the same to combine two or more programming languages to address specific type of challenges. For example, if you need something for strong typing, uh, or if you need something for a faster interpreter in an interactive interface, polyglot development can be a right choice for you. So this might sound good in theory, but not exactly in practice. To make this happen, we need to create a connector between these languages. And then we need to create a protocol in order to send the information between multiple different languages uh, in different environment. People have been already doing this by using existing development kits, like we have got GraalVM, but that simply involves a lot of boilerplate code. Through polyglot development, we wanted development teams to build and scale without much friction. They should be able to embed the low-level code in high-level environment without any sort of performance issues. So all of this simply brings us to the next agenda of the talk, which is the Metacall code. So yes, as we were talking about the polyglot development before, Metacall code allows us to make transparent cross-language function calls without any boilerplate. Metacall is an open source polyglot runtime. It is not just a library. It offers an entire runtime. And we can use this runtime to particularly call functions, modules, methods, and more between multiple different programming languages. Right now, you can use multiple languages using Metacall like C, C++, Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Ruby, Java, just to name a few. Recently, we have added support for WebAssembly as well, and we are adding new support for PHP. And this is simply increasing with the progress of the development going in right now. One thing that we need to understand is that Metacall is not just a library, and this is something that I emphasized before. It is a runtime in itself. So when I say it is a runtime, then Metacall has its own set of package managers, like it has its own versions of PIP and NPM, so that it can take care of the packages for interoperability. And since we're talking about interoperability, Metacall is end-to-end -end interoperable. It simply means that we can use Python with Ruby or vice versa. We can use Node.js with C Sharp or vice versa and so forth. Adding on top of it, we also have a standard CLI that is available for us. And we can use it to use Metacall. We can use it to call functions. We can use it to load functions. We can use it to debug our polyglot applications and much more. So using this particular multi-language interpreter uh, that Metacall is, it was initially developed for game engines, but right now it is being used to develop an entire function as a service uh, using the function mess, which we will be talking about a bit later. Uh, let us check out uh, how, like, let us check out a very simple uh, demonstration to see like how Metacall code exactly works. So we have a simple uh, VS code open here. And as you can see, I have already uh, a pre-built example for a simple calculation demo. So we have got two files here. The first one is the app.py, which is our Python file. And the next one is the index.js, which is a simple node script. So let us have a look at our Python file. And as you can see, we have got four simple functions here. The first one is for just adding two numbers. The second one is for subtracting two numbers. The third one is for multiplying two numbers and the fourth one is for dividing two numbers. As simple as that. Let us exactly see how we can use Metacall code to basically export all of these functions into a node script. So if you check out this particular node script here, what we're exactly doing is that we have this particular app.py, which we're importing it in a standard JavaScript import way. And we can simply run these console logs to check if the function is exactly returning something. Now, just as a caution and just as a note, we really cannot use uh, the exact node itself to execute these because Metacall is offering its own runtime. So we got to use that to basically make sure that all of these things run. 
So let us do a simple experiment. Let us go to the calculation demo and let us try to run this particular node script. So I can say node index.js and this will automatically return to me an error uh, simply because it is not able to identify the exact identifier. And this is pretty much for the most obvious reason. The Python syntax is not really compatible with that of JavaScript. So this is why we need to use Metacall since Metacall offers, offers its own runtime. So we can use the Metacall runtime itself instead of using the node or the Python uh, interpreter. So we can say Metacall and we can just simply say index.js. And as you can see, we are exactly getting the values uh, by simply passing in them through our node script and the functions are automatically loaded from our Python script. So for most of the people, it's quite a magic, but under the hood, uh, it is exactly what Metacall does. Let us try to have a look on how the things look from the Metacall CLI. So Metacall offers a very handy command line interface that we can use for loading, inspecting, and debugging our functions. And it can be simply launched by saying Metacall. And we have a handy CLI here and we can use a lot of commands. So let us push in the help command and let us see what we have got right here. So through this command line interface, we can load a script. So app.py is a script, index.js is a script. So we can load a script from a file into Metacall. Uh, we can show all the runtimes using the inspect command. We can evaluate a code snippet by specifying the runtime, the script. Uh, we can also call a function that has been loaded into Metacall. So let us try to do something. Let us try to load our app.py into Metacall. And to do that, we are going to use the load command. So let us try to have a look on how we can use the load command. So as you can see, if you're trying to use the load command, we need to specify the keyword load along with the runtime tag and the particular name of the file. So let us directly specify that. So load, our runtime is in Python and we want to load the app.py. And as soon as we do that, it has been loaded. So let us check that out on the meta calls meta object protocol. This is something that I will be talking about a bit later. So as you can see, uh, the meta call host has already been loaded. And apart from this, we have got the Python runtime and we have got the app.py module. And it contains all of the four functions that are defined in our app.py file. Let us go ahead and let us try to uh, maybe run these functions through the CLI itself without having to load this in any particular language. And to do that, we can simply use the command. Let us try to find that up. We can simply use the command call as the call. So this is a completely language agnostic interface. So we can just say call, let's say sum to comma three. And as you can see, we are getting the value five. So we don't need to write a, another script to basically call these functions in a different language. We can do that straight from our meta call CLI itself. We can see call mul, which is for multiplying two numbers, four comma five, and we're getting the value 20. So this is exactly how you can write the scripts, how you can inspect them on the meta call CLI, and how you can simply export them to some other interface uh, through the use of the meta call runtime in itself. So now that we have reached this point, we know what Metacall is and what it does. We can also check out on how we can install it. Uh, the official Metacall, Metacall core uh, repository has some great documentation on installing it. The easiest way to install Metacall is by simply using this particular uh, script, which is compatible with both Linux and Mac OS based distributions. Uh, if you want to build it directly from the source or you want to use some other ways for installing it, we have certain ways for doing that. You can either pull a Metacall image from Docker Hub or you can build and install it manually using CMake or you can simply install the pre-compiled tarball using the cell script that I showcased a bit before. You can also use uh, wget for getting this stuff and it will provide you the CLI, it will provide you the runtime and you can easily get started with building your polyglot applications. So Metacall pretty much does away with this complex installation. And once you download the Metacall, you can easily start up the CLI using the Metacall uh, command. So this is very, very similar to what I'm doing right here. You can easily start the Metacall CLI 
and you can start uh, playing around with it and you can start checking out on how you can inspect your script and how you can load different functions into some other programming language. So before Metacall, we had a lot of examples of being of like interoperability being implemented. So if I take some examples, uh, we have the component object model that allowed us to implement a library in C sharp and we can use the same in Visual Basic. We also have something like LLVM, which provides compiler backend uh, infrastructure for languages like Rust, Julia, and it provides a really nice integrated assembly format. So we have here the architecture of Metacall and we basically make use of a standard C API to make all of this happen. It simply means that we use the Metacall core library to embed different runtimes into the C programming language. We have got ports, we have got loaders, and we have got a meta object protocol, all of which I'm going to explain later in the slides. So right now, with the help of the meta call C API, you can simply remove the need for having a Python C API or a Node.js N API if you want to simply wrap up a low-level environment. So let us say that if you're trying to call the, these low-level libraries from some high-level languages, you don't have to create a C or a C++ wrapper on top of them. Metacall can simply take care of that. So the first step to understand how Metacall exactly works and how its architecture actually plays out is by understanding the ports. So as I mentioned before, Metacall offers us a C API that integrates with different languages and runtime. So using ports, we offer the Metacall API in multiple different programming languages. So if you remember the example that I showed you before, we were using the Python and the Node.js port to make the inter-language function calls possible. With the help of these ports, we are able to extend the meta calls functionality to different languages and make it possible for developers to use meta call without having to write any C or C++ code. One of the interesting parts of the meta call core API is how we do, uh, like how we do monkey patching to dynamic languages like Python especially during the runtime. It can be thought of as a hack, but it makes it possible for us to run the Python scripts in the meta call runtime. The meta object protocol is basically the core and the heart of the project. Uh, this meta object protocol allows us to tightly integrate with multiple different programming languages with each other. Like for our understanding and convenience, we have just noted down on how we represent these native and these complex values through the meta object protocol. So we can see that we have a 64 bit number uh, in the JavaScript object protocol and the meta object protocol basically represents it as a 64 bit floating point, uh, which is very, very similar to what we do in the C programming language. And then further we represent it as a floating value in the Python object protocol. So this is exactly how we do the same with the complex values like here, like we represent it as an object in the JavaScript object protocol, you represent it as a map in the meta call object protocol, and finally as a dictionary in the Python object protocol. So the main crux of the meta object protocol is that we abstract all of these using this standard protocol so that the representations are easily carried over and we don't have to basically worry about the same. So if you want to implement your own loader or maybe your own port, uh, this particular protocol serves as the standard that we need to follow to basically make sure that it is tightly integrated to the, to the entire core infrastructure. And finally, last but not the least, we have got the loaders. Uh, and it can be simply thought of as the backend for the ports, which acts as the front end for the core library. So these loaders are responsible for wrapping up the languages and embedding their runtimes with the meta called runtime in itself. Metacall offers a plugin based architecture so that we can uh, directly embed multiple different languages. And these loaders carry the responsibility of embedding language into the Metacall. So you can implement your own loader, as I said before, using the Metacall specification, and it would be loaded lazily during the execution. This simply makes Metacall inherently lightweight compared to the other alternatives and quite easy to use as well. So if we talk about loaders, they have to follow some basic steps. These steps are init, load, discovery, clear, and destroy. So in the init, basically the initialization phase, we initialize the runtime and the load step, 
and this basically loads all our handles. You can consider them scripts through which we load the code on the particular runtime. In the discover phase, we inspect these functions and populate them into the meta object protocol. And finally, we have the clear phase where we remove these handles and we basically have the destroy phase, which closes the event loop and frees up all of the resources that the entire process has occupied. So what is the specific use case uh, that Metacall is solving for us? So the main reason why Metacall core was built to basically facilitate cross-language function call. But with this use case, we have extended it uh, to a platform where companies can simply migrate their monolithic architecture to a container-based architecture. So Metacall officially offers a function as a service tool chain, which can be exactly viewed on its direct website. And you can use it to develop, test, and deploy your application using an API gateway. If you want to have a look at a very simplistic open source version, there is an express fast RPC example that exactly shows on how you can write a function as a service in Node.js with just less than 100 lines of code using Metacall. So with this cross-platform polyglot runtime, you can now intermix code samples in different languages and still manage to deploy them. And this simply ensures that developers can intermix with each other and they can work on highly scalable, scalable software without having any friction. The entire Metacall fast can be thought of as like AWS lambdas or Azure function, but Metacall, instead of using triggers, Metacall converts the code into a function mess, which is then individually scaled on a Kubernetes cluster. So adding on top of it, Fast doesn't offer doesn't suffer from issues like cold start, uh, build dependencies in a standard way, because without using any weird package managers, it is very simple to use, and it basically does away with the vendor lock-in, and makes sure that we're abstracting the most complex concepts around building and deploying our application. So. Since uh, Metacall code is still in a beta phase, uh, we did some benchmarking and we did some testing to find how viable Metacall is for production use case. So for this purpose, we used an Intel Core i5 uh, with a virtual box VM. And we had got two threads and some three GB of RAM on a even distribution. And for the purpose of benchmarking, we used the Google test and Google bench. And after putting it against the hard coded Python C APIs, we discovered that the Metacall's foreign function interface can perform more than 1 million calls per second, which is still a bit slower than the Python C API, which technically performs nearly 1.7 million calls per second. This has given us a scope for further improvement and optimization that is still on the way. You can find more information about the Metacall's performance on the official FAQ page. So the Metacall FAQ page holds more information about the technical architecture of Metacall along with the FAS. And you can simply use it to discover more benchmarks and the potential benefits of using Metacall in production use case. With this, we jump into the last agenda of today's talk. And in this agenda, we will be basically building a polyglot application right from the very scratch. So what exactly are we trying to do with this particular polyglot application. So first we will be writing a very, very simple Python script. Uh, this Python script is just to fetch some new sources uh, by using a particular term like let's say Bitcoin or let's say PyCon uh, using the Google News RSS feed. We will be basically exporting all of this data inside an express application. And we will be inspecting it using the meta called CLI and we will be like basically loading the script model in the Express API and testing the API to exactly see on how it is working. So let's get started with it. So we already have this particular Google News scraper right here. And this is where I'm going to exactly get started with my code. So first things first, let us start writing our Python script. So I'm going to create a Python file main.py and let us do some imports. So the very first thing that I would like to import is a requests. And then I would like to import XML DOM. And I would like to get the parse string. 
that's cool. So we are going to write uh, a very basic Python function. And this function is to just pass in a term and get the top five Google News result that we can particularly render uh, through our API. So get Google News result. That's the first thing. And for the particular argument, we have this term right here. And we can simply say that, okay, we want to have a function to pass a term, get top five Google News results. That's cool. Uh, to basically specify that we just want to have like five uh, returns, we can say like count is equal to five. And all of this would be stored in our results list. And now we can simply specify an object using the parse string. And here we can use the requests uh, library so that we can particularly get started with our, yeah. So the GitHub Copilot is quite fast in that regard. So it officially offered us quite a fast interpretation. So let us now uh, get all of the objects by their tag name, which is the item. And finally, let us have a list here where we can store all of these links. So now that we have passed in these arguments, let us run a loop and exactly find their node name and just append it to the links so that we can return this, uh, we can return a particular list through this function. So, Yep, let us get started. We can just specify the link first. And now for node in, let's say item, and we want it to be in the child nodes. So these automated recommendations basically come a lot handy. And finally, we can append this to the links and we can append all of this to our results. So this is great. And finally, we can uh, return the all the results here and we should be done. So I can see if name, so no, we don't want anything related to this. Let's say we want for Bitcoin. So I'm going to exit my CLI. I'm going to get into the Google News Scraper and let me first install requests using the meta calls uh, pip. So I can say pip3 installed requests. Yeah, it has been already installed. So I can simply say meta call main.py. Okay, so, so we can simply uh, remove out this error by having an I here. That was a simple typo. And if I run meta call main.py, we can exactly see that we have got all of the news results from the Google News RSS feed fetch right on our command line. So this pretty much satisfies what we are looking for. So let us try building out a very simple API so that we can particularly call this function through uh, an express application. So for this purpose, I'm going to create uh, another file named as index.js. And uh, before I get started, we would need to install a few packages. One of them would be Metacall itself so that we can use the Metacall APIs. And the next one would be the Express so that we can pretty much build out our Express API as well. So now that we are ready, let us get started. So the first things right here, and the next will be the standard imports. So we would like to import Metacall. And then we would like to import the meta call load from file API that basically allows us to uh, load particular scripts into our node applications. Uh, I'm going to use require here and we have already installed meta call through the standard node package manager. So that would be pretty cool. So now we can simply say meta call load from file and we can specify the particular tag, which is Python in our case. So it will would be pi. And now we can specify uh, the particular name of the script where our Python code is stored. And that would be it. So we can simply do a console log here. And we can simply say meta call. 
And right here we can see uh, the name of the function that we would like to call. So it would be get Google News result. Let us verify it once. Yep. And then we can specify the particular uh, term that we want to search for. So let us say Bitcoin. And once we save it, let us try to run it uh, on our terminal. So we can say meta call index.js and that would fetch us all of the news articles from the Google News RSS feed. So this pretty much does what we are expecting it to do. But right here, we are trying to build out an express API so that we can get, uh, we can simply use get requests to get a lot of results altogether. So let us go ahead and let us comment it out. And now let us simply do a const express uh, to initialize our express application. Now we can do an express, we can do a port. So it can be at 3000. And finally, let us define a get request right here. And the request and the response. And uh, for this particular purpose, again, we would be sending a response. And we would be specifying a query term. And this query term would be used with the meta call. So meta call get Google news result along with the particular query term from the request. And if nothing is satisfied, we can just say invalid term and we are done with it. So now we can just say app listen and this particular polyglot application will be listening on the port 3000. Uh, so let us try on it and check how our express application works. So meta called index.js, a lot of errors right here, which is address is already in use. So let me just kill this particular address, px kill port. And let us try running it now. So our polyglot application is running on port 3000. Uh, I don't need to open it in browser. I can just do a simple curl here. For this purpose, I can just say 3000 and I can specify a query term. So in my case, it can be Bitcoin. So yes, we have got our API response that contains all of the Google News RSS feed uh, that we found using the particular term Bitcoin. So these are a lot. Uh, we can simply do a clear and we can use now for PyCon. Let's see what we get right here. So we get a lot of things right here. Let us try to do it for Thailand. And again, we got a lot of news articles. So this is exactly the Polyglot application that we wanted to develop. And within like less than 50 lines of code, we now have a Polyglot news scraper that has been extended using, ex using an Express API. So various projects have been built using Metacall. Some of the popular ones are the, the ones that are listed over here. So AssetCam is one of the projects that has been built using Metacall and it uses Metacall core for its core plugin based architecture. And it is a video manipulation project that particularly uses OpenCV. And through the help of Metacall, it makes sure that we are embedding the Python scripts into the plugin system. Then we have got Pragma, which is a language that is used to build GraphQL APIs in no time. And again, it is using Metacall so that it can import and execute the functions in multiple languages. Polyglot kernel is one of the projects that I developed during my Google Summer of Code. And it is a wrapper kernel uh, using the Metacall code so that we can embed multiple different languages into the Jupyter Notebook interface. So this brings us to the end of our session. So I would be ready to take up any questions uh, in and about Metacall Core, Metacall Fast, and about the general examples that are showcased. Thank you for patiently listening to my talk. And I will be more than happy to resolve all of the queries that you might have. Otherwise, you can reach out to me on my GitHub and on my Twitter. And you can find all of the examples that are demonstrated during this particular talk. Uh, over my GitHub repository, which is Hirsch Casper PyCon APAC 2021. Thanks everyone.